What's up, everybody? Welcome back to my walkthrough for the challenges on Duels of the Planeswalkers 2013. Today, we're taking on Desperate Measures, which is actually a really, really cool one. The trick to this, once you understand it, once you see it, is actually obvious. Like, it's kind of obvious, and it's really fun. Uh, Urbrask, Bosch, and Death's Shadow. Can you use them to win this turn? Uh, Death's Shadow is actually a really weird card. It's pretty cool. Um, we got Urbrask. We, we were just talking about, I was just talking about how much I enjoy that card. Uh, he doesn't actually do anything for us right now, but uh, he's still a pretty good card. So the entire linchpin for this entire thing is looking at the board and recognizing what we have to do because every single step, there's a lot of stuff that you can do in Magic that's reactionary, and you can win a lot of games that way. Uh, but what's really gonna make you a top tier, like uh, take you to the next level player, is if you look at scenarios several moves in advance. It's, 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 magic is so much fun. I stutter a ton, but uh, magic is so much fun because it is like a chess match where anybody can have any piece at any time like you never really know seven pieces are always hidden at the beginning uh i mean there's just a ton of different things that can happen in this game which is really the beauty of it which is why small aside maybe a couple people that play uh fnm friday night magic can relate with me on this one or maybe people will flame me in the comments but the people that just play strict like download decks like they get the deck list of like a pro tour player and just play that deck those people just drive me nuts and i freaking love when i beat them because the look on their face is priceless but like the fun thing like and i beat you because like oh sideboard in nevermore i know exactly what cards you need to win i know what your win condition is like never mind but nevermore is a really underrated card by the way i know it's a turn three like it's a three drops so if you're playing like zombies or something it's not really that good but you can essentially shut out 16 cards in someone's deck i feel like people don't realize that because people run fours of a lot of cards so like theoretically if you get all four nevermores and you play them all then that's 16 cards that when they draw it they can't do anything but never mind. That's beside the point. There's a lot of removal for spells like Nevermore anymore, though. But uh, anyway, was <laughs> like two minutes and nothing to do with this video. But it just really bothers me when people just strictly play decks like that because the most fun aspect of this game is the fact that there are so many different pieces and it's just really a cerebral game where you have to think ahead of your opponent. And that's the key to this challenge is being able to discern what the board state is, what we need to be worried about, what we don't need to be worried about, and figure out where to go from there. Uh, now, the first thing we need to look at are these armored crustacean buddies, these little crabby crabs. They're two fives. He's got like a billion. No, he's only got two of them. He's got two of everything. Uh, they're going by two by twos. Uh, Air Elemental is a flying 4-4. Four, four. He's a classic. That card's been around a long time. And he's got these Rhinos. They're running around with 4-4 four, four and Trample. Uh, nothing too exciting, but a lot of stuff. That's that's the problem here. We got, like I said, we got Urbrask. He, uh, creatures we control have haste, and creatures our opponent controls enter the battlefield tapped. We also have Bosch the Iron Golem. He's got Trample and Sacrifice an Artifact. Bosch the Iron Golem deals damage equal to Sacrificed Artifact. Converted mana cost to target creature or player. Now, there's a couple things. That's, that's mostly just their kind of... Uh, as a trick almost. We also have Death's Shadow. Death's Shadow gets Neg X Neg X where X is our life total. That's a really weird card. That's actually huge in this. Like that's a huge thing in this challenge. Uh, but we don't have to worry about it just yet. Let's take a look at our hand. Our hand's actually pretty interesting. We have Phyrexian Processor. As Phyrexian Processor enters the battlefield, pay any amount of life. That's huge. Four and tap it, four colorless and tap it, put an XX black minion creature token onto the battlefield where X is the life paid as Phyrexian Processor enters the battlefield. Weird. It's really weird. It's a weird card. We've also got Faith's Shield. Spoiler alert, this is the MVP of the day right here. Faithful Hour, if we have five or less life, instead of just getting one permanent we control protection of a color, we give all of our permanents protection of a color. It's actually really funny because all our little lands have the protection symbol, which matters. I mean, there are cards that destroy lands, but 
it's just funny, whatever. Earthquake as well is in our hand. Earthquake is a classic too. It deals X damage to each creature without flying and each player. Uh, we've got Flame Wave as well, which is like way more expensive and worse Earthquake, but it does it to everything. I don't know, it's a card. It costs like 500,000, so I don't really know. But uh, there you go, that's, that's what we have to work with. You might have already seen the combo that we're going to be working off of, but first let's just talk about some of the things that we can think about. Now the first thing is going to be Bosch's ability. Now with Bosch's ability we might think that we could play Phyrexian Processor, sack it, you know, maybe sack Bosch to some crazy stuff. Really all that's going to do is not even close to lethal damage. He's able to block everything we have. That's not really the play. Next we'll take a look at Earthquake. Earthquake deals X damage to each creature without flying in each player. Uh, there's a lot of stuff that we can do with Faith's Shield, where we play Faith's Shield on one of these guys. Uh, we give it protection from red, we earthquake, we damage, you know, we kill, we earthquake for five, and we kill, you know, all his ground creatures, then we swing in. But the thing with that is that that's not going to be enough to kill him, he's at 22 friggin' life, so we're only going to do, I mean, if we do Bosch here, uh, Bosch is still not going to be able to kill him, he's only going to do six, it's only going to do 11. He's coming in for eight next turn. I mean, it's it's not really the best opportunity. Uh, Bosch will also die because he will have taken five damage as well. So we would attack him. He'd probably block with the air elemental. Bosch is dead, air elemental's dead, but who cares because we're at 12, he's at 22, he has a 4-4, four, four. our side is dead. So that's that's not really too good either. Uh, we can also try and, I don't know if we have, do we have enough mana for this? Set seven. Yeah, we do. So we could try and face shield uh, and then do the flame wave and try and wipe out everything. But in that case, he's got the uh, two ones living. And since we have to win on this turn, I mean, even in that instance, we're still not doing very well. Because all we have left is Bosch. I mean, Bosch could attack, but he's still got... You know, I mean, we're not going to win this turn, which is the main challenge, and we're not even in good shape if this is a main combat scenario. That's kind of what I'm trying to rationalize it into, is if this was a combat scenario, that's not good either. But here's the thing, and here's something that you may have seen from the get-go, but that we were kind of moving away from with some of these other scenarios. It's the fact that... Faith's Shield has a Fateful Hour, and Fateful Hour is this really cool mechanic uh, that they brought in, or that they created, and what it does is basically, it's a whole suite of cards, where if you have five or less life, instead of a relatively demure or a relatively ineffective ability, Faith's Shield's kind of cool, because protection, instant speed protection is pretty neat, but uh, Faith's Shield in particular gives everything i mean you can kind of see how fate flower works just from this it get, it goes from giving one creature or one permanent protection to giving everything you can control protection everything with fateful hour is kind of like that if you have five or less life the powers of these cards is just astronomical and that coupled with this is actually how we're going to win this challenge uh, now it's actually going to do a couple things and i didn't realize that this would do this when I first played it uh, but what we want to do what I was thinking is that I would play this card and that I would pay down so that I was able we could go all the way up to you know 11 or 12 we could kill ourselves we could fall on our swords right now fall on our own sword right now uh, but what I was thinking is that I want to get down to five I want I don't want to be less than five but I want to get down to five so that faith's shield will activate will be able to protect all my creatures uh and and that's really the thing that wins this for me and the thing that i didn't even realize is that death's shadow then increases to an 8-8 uh which i didn't think about prior to this but it's actually going to be the card that wins this for us it's going to be uh 
Death's Shadow coupled with this Face Shield play. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and Earthquake for four because we want to get rid of the two green creatures because the next thing we want to do is play Faith's Shield on it really doesn't matter what permanent we select. But the reason why we're doing it for four and we're not doing it for five is first of all five will kill us. Second of all the four is going to get rid of all of one color that Yeva has which means that if we do this and select blue our creatures are going to be able to attack in and be unblockable. And uh, since we're down to one life, Death's Shadow is uh, 12 attack, 12 and 6 is 18, and we swing in for lethal damage. They're unblockable, Yeva has no choice but to take it, and we really turned that scenario around right there. Uh, it's a pretty rough one, and like I said, it's pretty complicated at first because there's a lot of incorrect plays that you can make. There's a lot of poor choices that you can make right there that might seem really enticing. Um, but the main draw to that, the main trick to that challenge is being able to really plot your entire turn from the time you draw a card. I mean, that's really what the whole challenge is about, knowing exactly what you're going to do from the time your turn starts to the time that you were declared the winner of the match. So it's a pretty cool challenge. I actually really like that one. I think it's a lot of fun. I hope you guys enjoyed the episode. I hope it helped you out. I know that one is really tricky. Not as tricky as tomorrow's. Tomorrow's, oh man, Sculpting the Perfect Warrior is on the docket for tomorrow and it is one of the hardest challenges. I think it might be the hardest one in the bunch. Uh, but that is the story for tomorrow and I will see you guys then.